hey guys, uh, <laughs> how have uh, things been going lately? Um, long time no see? Okay, okay, in all seriousness and very poor acting aside, um, I do want to start out this video by first apologizing for the lack of content over the last several months. Um, I do work a full-time job, but I won't lie, I, I have had enough probably free time where if I would have really put my um, nose to the grindstone, I would have been able to put out some content for you and just between, you know, playing a lot of different stuff in my free time and other things I've been doing, I just really haven't had much of an urge or drive to make videos in recent months. But I, I'm here to pretty much tell you, hopefully going forward, and I'm going to do my damnedest, um, I do want to grow this channel and I'm very appreciative of everyone who has subscribed, who has stuck around with me over the last several um, years and even months and a lot of people maybe if you saw one of my older videos and you subscribed even if I haven't made content in the last handful of months anyone who stuck around and have watched my videos I do want to thank you um, it is my intention going forward from today to make more content for you to put out stuff on a more consistent basis um, just because I feel like I haven't uh, done a very good job of that and um, the intention is, like I said, I want to see this channel grow. It's already been way more successful than I ever really thought it could be. Um, you know, a few of my videos have brought you uh, a lot of people to my channel, and I, I want to keep that momentum going. So I want to kind of do a video today, and I know I'm a bit late to the party on this one. Um, and that's Nintendo discontinuing this wonderful little gem. That is the NES Classic Edition. Um, if you didn't know what this is, this is the official, I guess you could call it, plug and play from Nintendo that has 30 really good NES games built into it. Um, and it's been quite the uh, darling and uh, collector's item especially. And Nintendo officially uh, has now discontinued this. That They put news out. And needless to say, a lot of people aren't too happy with that decision. And I'm not necessarily here to... Um, tell you that that I feel that's right or wrong. Um, I think over the course of me talking about this, I think you'll kind of get my feelings and I think I'm pretty much with the majority of people that I do think, you know, they could have handled it better. You know, do I think they could have kept making more of them? Sure. Um, and you'll kind of get my reasoning why, but I'm not really here necessarily to, you know, call Nintendo a bunch of idiots for discontinuing. I'm just kind of putting my two cents out there on why I think they did discontinue the console. And I'm just going to read you a little excerpt here from their official press release they released a few days ago on this. Um, Throughout April, Nintendo of America's territories will receive the last of the NES Classic Edition for this year. We encourage anyone interested in obtaining the system to check out uh, retailers with uh, regular uh, availability um, or excuse me, regarding availability. We understand that it has been difficult for many consumers to find the system and for that we apologize. We have paid close attention to consumer feedback and we greatly appreciate the incredible level of support and consumer interest this product has had. And I kind of gone on to say, oh, we put out more than we uh, originally had planned to try to meet consumer demand, blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of PR uh, fluff to put out there to try to appease people. I don't think it's probably done a very good job of that, frankly. But um, I'm, I'm mainly here, like I said, to give my two cents on why I think um, they discontinued it. And I, I do want to mention something regarding the statement that I don't think a lot of people have really mentioned it, at least the handful of uh, videos I've watched and people talking about uh, Nintendo discontinuing it. And that's the, the wording this year. Um, to me, that tells me that kind of leaves them an open, well saying we may have discontinued it for now, but we may come back some point down the road, maybe the next holiday or so or two, and we may do another run of these, or we may do a new version of it, or we may do a Super Nintendo version of it. You know, there's a lot of uh, ways this could potentially, and that's going to be the other part of the video, is rumors have been flying around since they discontinued the NES Classic. Rumors have been flying around they're working on a Super Nintendo version, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit uh, in this video as well. But I first want to just kind of give my two cents on why I personally feel they did discontinue the system, um, at least for now. Um, and the first thing is, this you can kind of get from the, uh, the statement, is that was this was a limited run product. It was never meant to be an official long-term product. Um, I guess you could kind of call it a, bit of a little bit of a collector's item in that regard. Um, if people forget that Nintendo more or less 
stomped out the Wii U's life last, I want to say, spring. You know, they said, uh, you know, you could kind of tell when they, the only real thing they were going to show at A3 this last, uh, last year was Zelda. Um, they didn't really have a whole lot in the pipeline. And because of that, especially with Christmas, really outside of Pokemon and a couple other games, Mario Maker, they didn't really have a whole hell of a lot this last Christmas to really get people hyped about Nintendo stuff. And this NES Classic they made was kind of, I guess you could call it a bit of a stopgap and why they probably only ever intended it to be a limited run product or a limited time thing, not a permanent product. Um, because if you kind of think about it, um, it's not something you're going to be able to put more money into. You can buy the core system, sure. You might have to buy a second controller if you can find the uh, actual Nintendo brand controller separately. Those are almost as hard, if not harder, to find than the actual NES Classic itself. Um, you know, you might buy an accessory. Thankfully, there have been a lot of third-party uh, options out there for controllers. You can use a Wii Classic controller, even if the controllers are ridiculous. Excuse me, the controller cords are ridiculously short for that reason, because they are uh, essentially classic controllers. Um, I when I bought mine, I actually had to buy a couple of six-foot extension cables for both of my controllers for it, just so I could sit on my couch, just because my TV is at least ten feet from back from where I sit when I when I game. Um, so yeah, um, like I said, it, it's not an item that necessarily Nintendo can make a lot of money on in the long term. Um, and that kind of goes into the next point. They want people uh, to buy their products that are going to uh, um, make them money in the long run. And that's kind of the 3DS and the Switch, which are, I guess you could kind of call their main focuses now. I guess the 3DS, I think they are starting to wind that down a little bit. But and I guess maybe if this was their reasoning, I don't really necessarily feel it might have been, but maybe in their mind, well, if these people feel they can't get an NES Classic from us, they'll buy our, a 3DS and a Switch, and they'll download these games on the virtual consoles on those systems. Because I, I think a lot of people also don't really think about it too much or really realize, even though the 3DS and the Switch are, quote-unquote, their current consoles, you can still buy, you know... Uh, uh, content digitally, a lot of these uh, ROMs and uh, virtual console games still off the Wii U and even the original Wii. The Wii Shop channel is still there and it's still functioning. Um, and I think a lot of people forget that. So even if you buy a second-hand Wii or Wii U somewhere, even if they're not making games for those systems in a an official capacity, you can still put your credit card on the shops there and still purchase stuff. So even if there's not you can't go out and buy like an actual Nintendo deck and put a cartridge in it. Nintendo still got several avenues where they, in their minds at least, they feel um, people can still buy, you know, legal ROMs from them, virtual console, WiiWare, Wii U uh, digital games from them, not to mention the 3DS and the Switch. So I think in their minds, maybe we can push people to buy something else that will make us money in the long run by discontinuing the NES Classic. And that kind of goes along the lines of the virtual console as well. Um, in, in maybe in Nintendo's mind, and I, I think this might have ring a bit of truth, they didn't want to devalue games on the Virtual Console. Because in their mind, had they kept the NES Classic a quote-unquote permanent product, um, well, why would I, in, consume, in their mind, in the minds of the consumer, they'll be thinking, oh, well, why would I you know, spend five bucks on Super Mario 1 on Switch Virtual Console when I can go get all three... Super Mario games for on average two bucks each, you know, 30 times two is 60 bucks, two bucks each, and get all three Mario games and a whole bunch of other good NES games on this NES Classic. I only have to buy a, a, a Switch to play these games. So I think in the long run, they didn't necessarily want to devalue their virtual console games, but I, I, I would argue that's a bit of a mistake in thinking just for the fact I think a lot of people were even remotely interested in, in, in the NES Classic weren't going to buy a Switch or a 3DS anyways. Um, they were interested in maybe reliving their childhood memories. A lot of older people who, you know, were my age or a little older who grew up on, grew up in the 80s and the early 90s and had an NES, they wanted to, you know, show their kids these uh, games they grew up on. And, and this was a quick, simple, easy way for them to do it. They don't have an interest in uh, you know, Mario Kart 8 or Zelda Breath of the Wild or any upcoming Switch game like ARMS or Super Mario Odyssey. They just wanted the games from their childhood and they didn't have to want to go out, 
you know, and, and buy an NES deck and deal with it not working and buying the cartridges, which are still really expensive. This was a quick, easy plug and play for them to do that. They were never going to buy that. And I think that if Nintendo had any sort of thinking along the lines on why they did discontinue the NES Classic for now, for that reason, I, I think it was a little bit, um, I guess you could say, misguided or not... Um, the proper thing because like I said I think these are completely at least to an extent somewhat different markets the the switch and 3ds versus just people who are interested in the NES classic um, another reason I think Nintendo at least for now discontinued this system is and I think this was inevitable they knew it especially with no way to update it um, people are gonna we're gonna hack the hell out of this thing um, that was an inevitability you know this thing wasn't like the 3ds or the Wii U or the switch where if a, a workaround or a hack comes out you know, they can patch it out or, you know, release an update that'll eliminate that backdoor or that, you know, way of downloading or playing their games illegally. This was an all-encompassed one system. There was never going to be anything, a way to up, update it. Um, and for that reason alone, I didn't think they want to have a ton of these floating out there because people could easily load these things with when it eventually got to the point of, like, every NES game and, you know, resell them for ridiculous amounts of money. You know, like selling an original Xbox with a loaded hard drive of a whole bunch of classic Super Nintendo, Genesis, NES games on it, that kind of kind of thing. I think that's what they were trying to uh, avoid because I guess you could kind of call it a, an indirect way to have an official Raspberry Pi kind of device that had, it's the best legal emulator from Nintendo that could play every NES game and they didn't want to... Uh, again, kind of go along the lines of devaluing or having people, you know, get every game under the sun and not, you know, buy, have a, a way to buy from buy their legal ROMs from them on, on other devices. So I think they just kind of wanted to limit hackers and people's availability just because they knew this thing was going to get hacked. Um, and I, and this is something more along the lines, uh, kind of the uh, one of the final reasons. And uh, they just had too many things going on because like I said even though the Wii U had more or less been discontinued they discontinued manufacturing it last late last year you know around Christmas time not only were they making the NES classic they were also ramping up for the switch launch making enough to meet demand for launch and also they were trying to you know make more 3ds's and 2ds's because um, I don't think a lot of people realize the 3ds and 2ds were very hard to get over Christmas um, just because of the new Pokemon games and the new Pokemon games come out um, getting the actual hardware they play on, they're still popular enough where it's really hard to get one at holiday time if you're not paying attention. And uh, I think they just had so many things going on. Um, I think to an extent, I feel that could have contributed to the shortage of the NES Classic least, or at least how it, long it took them to restock, even the handful of uh, times they did restock the NES Classic. I think just... Um, having so many different things going on, and I, I and this kind of goes along the lines of the Switch and its shortage because it's been hard to get a Switch too, not necessarily as hard as the NES Classic, just because they're still trying to, you know, make Switches and they're still going to keep making them, so then they still want to sell it. Um, but I, I don't think a lot of people really realize the time, energy, or money, or really think about how hard it is to launch a new console worldwide. Because back in the, the 90s and the early 2000s and the, even the 80s, you know, generally when a, a new hardware generation started or a, a new console cycle started or a new system came out, generally it only came out in one, maybe two territories first. And uh, after that, you know, you know, the other major territories got it, you know, a handful of months later. Uh, I'll give you a couple of quick examples. The N64. Uh, that came out in June 96 in Japan. America didn't get it theirs till late August of 96, and Europe didn't even get it till the following spring of 97. Um, so they had to wait almost a year to get the N64, despite all the magazines and, you know, the early internet at the time being all gaga over the N64 and Mario 64. You know, poor Europe had to wait nearly a year. Uh, PS2 is another good example. Japan got theirs first in March 2000, and North America and Europe didn't get theirs till the the following fall and maybe the, the next year. So it, people don't really think about it. It's only been a trend in the last, really, I would say 10 years and the last couple of console generations where a, a worldwide launch has been the norm for a new piece of hardware. Um, and just the logistics of that and the time and, and energy and you know resources that go into that 
you know, you have to have different regions. Thankfully, the switch at least isn't region locked, you know, but there's, you know, different voltages and power. So you have to have different versions of the system for that. Um, there's different languages. There's different, you know, regulations and, and tariffs and taxes, you know, especially when you're launching in, you know, multi um, regions like Europe and there's different countries even outside the European Union and in North America even you got Canada, Mexico, uh, the US, South America, Japan, in Asian territories, China, Korea, if they got those uh, you know the switches. There's, there's just a whole slew of things that go into a new console launch especially a worldwide one and I, I think at least regarding the switch that's why I think it's been, you know, there's been shortages. I don't think there's, at least with the Switch, I don't think there was an artificial shortage like maybe Nintendo with other things, maybe like the, you know, Amiibos in the past or maybe the NES Classic to an extent. At least with the Switch, I don't think there was the an artificial shortage on this, you know, that some people claim Nintendo will have on products. And I'm not saying, I'm not making that as an excuse for a shortage of NES Classics. Um, I could just see that as a potential contributor to Nintendo not making nearly as many or at least not being able to restock the, the classic as quickly as they could have just because of all the other things they had going on last Christmas when it came up until now with the Switch being out. And uh, the last reason, and, and this kind of goes along to the second part of this video, is kind of the, the, the potential for a new Super Nintendo classic which rumors have been starting to float around. They've discontinued the NES so they can come out with a Super Nintendo one this Christmas. Um, and, you know, in order to, to make room and get the ball rolling on that, they had to discontinue the old one. Um, and I'm going to just kind of give you some no-brainer games and a few kind of hopeful games that I would love to see on a potential Super Nintendo Classic if that's actually what Nintendo has in the uh, uh, development pipeline. Um, and... Um, I'm just going to show a few of these games real quick. I apologize if any of these fall out of my hand. This is, might be a little awkward on camera. But uh, F-Zero, this is pretty much a no-brainer. Um, you know, great launch title. Still a really fun racing game that's aged really well. Um, the Donkey Kong Country lines of games here real quick. Um, now, technically, yes, Rare made these, but Nintendo still owns the rights. So, um, you know, three Donkey Kong Country games would be a pretty much an easy enough thing for them to do. Um, Zelda, you know, both NES Zeldas were on the NES one. It would be a no-brainer for them to put uh, the new, uh, the one Super Nintendo one on a potential uh, Super Nintendo classic. Uh, Super Punch-Out, you know, Pilot Wings, you know, really good underrated launch title that at least in recent years has had a newer release with uh, Pilot Wings Resort on the 3DS and Super Punch-Out. Uh, you know, this is still kind of fresh in a lot of people's minds. The original Punch-Out was on the NES Classic. Uh, there was Punch-Out on the Wii a few years ago, so there has been recent entries in that that people might fondly remember. A um, couple other uh, easy enough ones to do. Um, Star Fox and uh, Super Metroid, two classics. Uh, it hasn't been very difficult for a lot of clone systems to run Star Fox. Super Metroid is a... Uh, a classic, you know, there have been Metroid games in recent years, even if Other M, you know, kind of had very mixed reception. Um, and I think what would really be awesome, at least along the lines of Star Fox, and finally release Star Fox 2. Could you imagine the, you know, the finally having an official release of Star Fox 2 to get some hub and pipe, uh, excuse me, some pub and hype <laughs> around the, uh, the Super Nintendo Classic by finally releasing officially Star Fox 2. Um, you know, that was the, the indirect sequel that uh, Argonaut was working on at the time and eventually officially got canceled over, even though it was pretty much done in favor of Star Fox 64 on the N64. So just imagine that finally coming out with Star Fox 2 on a, on a potential Super Nintendo classic on top of the original. I think that would be awesome. And uh, just some, some pretty much no-brainer. A lot of Mario games. Um, I don't know if I can... Hold these up real quick without them falling out of my hand here real quick. Yeah, the hell of it. So Super Mario Kart, pretty much a no-brainer. This has been Mario Kart 8 Deluxe comes out in a week. It'd be a no-brainer to have the original on that. Um, Yoshi's Island Super Mario World 2 and the original Super Mario World. Again, every Mario game uh, in the mainline series was on uh, the NES one, so it only makes sense to put the uh, Super Nintendo one. 
And then uh, Super Mario RPG, you know, to have your JRPG flair, um, you know, like on the NES Classic, there was Final Fantasy, you know, to have Super Mario RPG on there would make a hell of a lot of sense. Um, and I think Square Enix would be okay with that too, since they were the ones that helped co-develop it. And I guess you could call these down here, these are my, I guess you could kind of call them third-party hopefuls and, you know, some other potential first-party ones that I'd like to see. Um, Killer Instinct, I, this was a really good game back in the day. The problem is I don't think this would ever potentially come just because Microsoft has the rights to this franchise now through their acquisition of Rare, and I don't know if they necessarily want uh, this version on there. They'd probably want to re-release it themselves on their own hardware if they were ever going to do it. But I think that would be a great game if Nintendo could get the rights for uh, Killer Instinct. Um, at, uh, UN Squadron, a really, really fun shooter. Uh, and I, this is just this is from Capcom. Just imagine Capcom Super Nintendo, some of their games coming to that. Uh, you know, Demon's Crest, this. Um, I just could imagine some of the stuff they could, a couple of games they could put on there. Um, a couple of no-brainer Konami games, and they, since the, you know Konami had a couple of things on the uh, NES Classic, Super Castlevania 4, Contra 3, um, two definitive classic games in those respective franchises. Those would be no-brainer third-party games to have on there. And then a couple of Enix games, uh, the original Ant Tracer and Soul Blazer. Um, Ant Tracer is a fun little uh, action game with some simulation elements if you've never played this. Um, it, it's definitely, it was pretty much a launch title or it came out very close to the Super Nintendo's launch. It was expensive as hell. Back in the day, it was 60 bucks for a long time. It really dropped in price. I remember I had to spend, I rented it so many times, and I eventually had to save up my uh, allowance to finally buy it from 60 bucks from a local Walmart. And uh, Soul Blazer, this is uh, in that uh, Terra Enigma line of games from, uh, oh, good grief, I'm going to feel bad for not remembering the uh, developer's name, but in that line, this was the first game in that series. I'd love to see. This is a really good action RPG from... Uh, uh, Enix that I think they could get the licensing from from Square Enix. That would be a, a great game to have on there that I think a lot of people never got an opportunity to play. And then a couple other games here real quick. Um, Chrono Trigger I think is a, a hope, but just for the fact Square has re-released this in more official capacities in recent years, say on the, PS, on the PS1 uh, digital library on PSN, uh, on PS3 and Vita, you can buy the PS1 version of that, and on the DS they re-released Chrono Trigger. So I think that would be hopeful, wishful thinking to get Chrono Trigger, but you know, Final Fantasy 2 or 3 I think would be really cool. Just one of the Final Fantasies, uh, given the original Final Fantasy was on uh, the NES one, it would be make sense to put 2 or 3 or you know Chrono Trigger on there. And uh, Earthbound, um, I apologize for having these in cases, uh, just because I like to keep these a little bit more protected, and these are a little bit harder to Fine games are a little rare, so I keep these in protective shells. Earthbound, I think, on paper would be a no-brainer one, but I think I could very easily see Nintendo doing something a little different. Um, if you didn't notice or hear in, in the last few, uh, I think it was last month, Square Enix announced the Saiken Densetsu um, collection for the Switch, where it's all three uh, Saiken, Saiken Densetsu games, which are the Secret of Mana series, for those of you who don't know, what that series was called in Japan. Um, we got the first game in the series as Final Fantasy Adventure. The second game came out as Secret of Mana, and we never got Saiken Densetsu 3, which would have been Secret of Mana 2, had it come out in the U.S., um, and I, hopefully that will come to the West because we'll finally have an official release of uh, Saiken Densetsu 3 um, on that compilation. And I could very easily see Nintendo doing something along the lines with Earthbound on the Switch, you know, Given they officially released both, you know, the original Mother and Earthbound uh, on the Wii U Virtual Console in the last couple of years, um, the fact they could actually maybe come out with a, a Switch compilation of those three games and finally release Mother 3 in an official capacity, I could see some kind of, like, Mother or Earthbound collection um, instead of putting Earthbound on a Super Nintendo uh, Virtual Console or Super Nintendo Classic, they could put you know, do kind of a special edition of, of the Mother Trilogy and finally bring out Mother 3, which we never got in the States. It's probably just wishful thinking on my part in that regard, but I just wanted to kind of give my feelings on that, and I'd love to see that at some point. Frankly, I thought they would have done that on the 3DS long ago, but it still hasn't happened. But I digress. So that's kind of my two cents on this, guys, um, as my cat is playing with my feet under the covers. 
Um, let me know what you guys think. Do you agree that with the majority of people that think Nintendo was a bunch of idiots for discontinuing the system? Do you kind of understand where they might have been coming from uh, with discontinuing the system for now? Um, let me know in the comments below. And also, what would you love to see on a proposed Super Nintendo Classic? There are so many great Super Nintendo games. It's still easily a top three console of all time for a lot of people that I didn't even touch on in this video. So feel free to leave me what uh, games you'd love to see in a Super Nintendo Virtual Console uh, release from uh, Nintendo, a Super Nintendo Classic uh, in the comments below. I'll, I'll, I'd love to read that. Otherwise, again, I apologize for the lack of video guys in uh, recent uh, months. I'm going forward. I'm definitely going to do my damnedest to get more content out to you. Thank you for sticking around. So you guys, in the meantime, you take it easy, and I'll see you next time.